It's that time again. The annual conference of the American Society of Ag Consultants, otherwise known as ASAC, is going to be held in Fort Myers, Florida, this November 4th and 5th. Kirk Covington is one of nine professionals who will address the conference. The other speakers who will cover a wide range of topics represent Florida Farm Bureau, Florida Citrus Commission, University of Tennessee Institute of Agriculture, National Ag Law Center, Risk Mitigators and Advisors, Tyler Associates, as well as the lead economist for dairy at Cobank, and myself, Chrissy Wozniak, from North American Ag. The day and a half of presentations will be followed by ag tours on Tuesday afternoon at Echo Farms, one of my favorite places here in Fort Myers. Attendees will experience farming at its most creative, with unique demonstrations, plants, and techniques being used to help farmers and urban gardeners in developing countries. A second tour at ECHO will showcase simple technologies that can improve food, water, and shelter for millions of people. A third tour of a hydroponic grower is also being planned. For more information and to register, visit www.agconsultants.org. That's www.agconsultants.org. See you there. Unconventional Ag is the industry source to discover how to differentiate products and processes and take advantage of emerging markets related to specialty oilseeds, grains, and their byproducts. Happening in Minneapolis, November 29th and 30th, 2022, this conference is a newly refocused event and news platform featuring innovative and emerging value-added opportunities for farmers, grain handlers, processors, food marketers, startups, equipment, and technology providers, and more. This is the eighth annual conference, previously titled the Organic and Non-GMO Forum. It's expanding to meet industry needs. For more information and to register, visit unconventionalag.com. That's unconventionalag.com. Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak. My guest today was raised on his family's third generation potato farm in Skagit Valley, uh, Washington. With his brother, he founded a growing ag tech company and they bring remote monitoring and control to agriculture irrigation. From Skagit Valley, Washington, I would like to welcome the CEO of Coda Farm Technologies, David Wallace. Welcome and thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Chrissy. So first of all, tell me a bit about your background. How did being raised on your family farm inspire you to be an ag tech entrepreneur? Sure. Yeah. Um, So growing up in Skagit Valley, uh, the potato, the family potato farm was a huge part of my life. Um, You know, since I was a little kid, I knew that I wanted to be involved with the farm. I thought it was pretty much the coolest thing you could do. And um, at about the age of 12 or 13, I started driving tractors and working in the field um, and continued with that all the way through college, working summers um, and, and pretty much any time I had away from school. Um, a big part of uh, of my decision to leave the farm was the fact that my grand my grandpa and great uncle really encouraged me to go off and uh, get a Cajun out, uh, an education outside of agriculture, um, just because farming can be uh, a pretty uncertain career path, and it's. Uh, good to have an alternative as well as just, you know, different, different perspectives on the business. So, um, I, uh, after working on the farm for a full year after college, I went off to graduate school, pursued a PhD in chemistry, um, and graduated from that in, uh, early 2016. Um, and throughout that process, um, you know, I knew that I didn't want to stay in academia. Uh, I had developed pretty good programming skills during that time. And so I went off and, and continued my technical career, um, working at Amazon, uh, as a data scientist and doing a bunch of different programming things over there. But throughout the time that I was gone from the farm, um, I was constantly feeling the pull back to, (laughs) back to agriculture and, and back to farming. And so, Um, After a few years at that desk job, I decided to quit cold cold turkey and head back and and work on the family farm. So um, I've always had this kind of, uh, I don't know, like dual career path of really enjoying agriculture, but also really enjoying the technical side of things. Um, And so, you know, going back to the farm and starting um, a business that is, you know, focused on agricultural technology was kind of a natural um, progression for me, I think. 
Yeah, that's incredible. So tell me about Coda Farm Technologies and the Farm HQ platform and why was it started? Yeah, so Coda Farm Technologies was born um, really the first year after I uh, started working on the farm full time again. Um, I, you know, I was looking for some kind of problem to apply my technical skills to beyond, um, you know, beyond just driving tractors, which is super fun. But um, my dad and uncles uh, kind of pointed out this problem to me um, that our irrigation systems uh, are, are really kind of failure prone and they require a lot of manual oversight and a lot of manual labor. Um and as a result of that, they cause cause a lot of crop damage. Um, when things go wrong and we're not able to address it or even be aware of it immediately, that causes huge problems. So I set out to just find an existing monitoring system for uh, for hard hose reels. And it turned out that really none were available. Um, nothing existed for us to be able to just know what was going on with that piece of equipment from you know a few miles away. Um, and so this was a big enough problem and, and had a big enough financial impact on the farm that it made sense for me to go out and try to build something. So um, that first year, uh, we built 10 prototypes on the farm and, and tested them for a season. And what we saw was pretty remarkable. I mean, it was reducing uh, the amount of time that we had to spend driving around watching the equipment. Um, when there were equipment failures, the pump would shut off immediately and that would prevent yeah. crop damage and make it so that we could get out there um, with time to spare and, and not have uh, damaged crops. Um, and it, it really just kind of cut down on stress for us because it meant that when we were irrigating in the middle of the night, which we we often do, it's, it's better to irrigate at night if you can in most cases, um, we didn't have to get up and go check on that equipment multiple times. We could just look at our phone, basically, see that things were operating correctly or shut them off remotely if they weren't, and then go back to bed until the next morning. So it made a really big difference um, in just our day-to-day -day work there. Um, and then when we looked at the data at the end of the season, we realized that we were actually saving quite a bit of water and fuel and energy as a result of that. Um, and so it, it was just kind of a, a pretty big step forward for us. So that was that was the birth of the company on the farm. It kind of grew organically from there. Um, we had other farmers who, after I told them about it, wanted to come on board and test it too. And so um, we saw demand for it pretty quickly and uh, it's it's grown from there. Wow, that's that's amazing. And you're lucky you have this really unique perspective um, being an innovator, technologist, and a third generation farmer. So how does this perspective help you meet your customers' needs? Yeah, I mean, I think it it goes back to, um, you know, having grown up immersed in the day-to-day -day farming experience. Um, so, you know, one of my earlier memories on the farm is riding around with my grandpa when I was probably like 10 or 11 years old, not really able to contribute in, in any way, but definitely taking it in. And uh, we arrived at a field that was just completely flooded because a pump had just been running, you know, uncorked, like massive leak for hours on end. And, uh, you know, my grandpa had a bad temper. And uh, so it wasn't fun to be in the truck when that happened. Um, and so just, you know, being aware of issues like that and what the day-to-day -day work uh, on a farm is like, um, I think really helps to provide a perspective uh, when, when we're developing technical products. Um, that somebody who just has an engineering background would would not otherwise get. Um, so, you know, when we're when we're approaching a new problem on the farm, I kind of know how to approach that from a coding and, and engineering perspective. But I also know um, or, or have a good idea about what's going to be actually useful on a day to day basis for the farmer. So, um, I think that's that's really uh, what it comes down to is just having that intuition for what works on a farm and, and what doesn't. Right. That's, that's really key. And what kind of savings can a producer expect with farm HQ? Yeah. I mean, so there are two different aspects to this. Um, one is, you know, the dollars and cents savings, and that depends on what kind of crops you're growing and how often you're irrigating. So if you're irrigating two months out of the year, um, once a day, or, or maybe even twice a day, um, you can expect up to $2,000 per system in just fuel and labor savings. So the system really pays for itself year over year very, very quickly. Um, 
if you are growing a high value crop like potatoes or um, you know seedlings of some kind with a lot which a lot of our customers do just being able to prevent one accidental flooding event can save many thousands of dollars um so so there's big financial roi just right off the bat from installing our system the other aspect is the water savings um and this is what kind of surprised us um because what we're doing we're not fundamentally modifying the way that people irrigate um in terms of like the type of water distribution they're using um, but what we are doing is making sure that they shut off at the exact right time. And just by doing that, we can achieve, um, I, I believe it's eight to 10% efficiency gains on farms. And it's just because, you know, the day-to-day -day reality of farming um, necessitates that you're, you're setting a timer for maybe just a little longer than you need, or you're not able to get to every piece of equipment when it needs to be turned off. Um, and so being able to completely automate that process cuts out a lot of water. Um, so per system, I think we're looking at up to a half a million gallons of water per season per system, wow. um, which is, you know, over one acre foot for just a little cellular device. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty substantial savings. Yeah, that's remarkable. And does a farm need to go get all new irrig irrigation equipment or can it be retrofitted? It's all retrofit. So Amazing. we offer a, a small cellular device that you can bolt onto any hard hose irrigation reel, um, any electrically actuated valve or any water pump and automatically get remote monitoring, uh, remote start, stop, or, or valve open and close. You can put things on schedules. Um, and then we also automate things. So you can set uh, basic rules for, um, you know, if a pipe bursts, you can have a the pump turn off in a different location. Or um, if uh, you notice a pressure anomaly, um, you can turn off uh, a valve or something like that. Um, and then there's automatic alerting too. So we we knew that in order to make this system work and be viable for farmers, it needed to be um, compatible with the, the equipment that they already own. Because, um, you know, a lot of these things are twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 to purchase. Yeah. Um, and they're otherwise completely mechanically fine. They'll last generations. So right. um Having a, a retrofit solution for that is is definitely a, a, an important requirement. Yeah, that's great. And and is the setup difficult or time consuming? No, uh, setup is really easy actually. So um, we have videos on our website, uh, and you'll you'll notice that even even the ones that are cropped and sped up, we have a timer on them, and you can see that it only takes about forty minutes to install it in the field. Wow, that's awesome. um, so it's it's yeah, it's a pretty straightforward process, and we take pride in that. And does the platform work on mobile device, like any mobile device, any smartphone? It does, yeah. So it started off as just a computer app, um, but now it's grown. So it's a it's a mobile-friendly web application if you don't want to install something. And then we're just about to release our native uh, iOS and Android apps as well. So it, it really works with uh, with any kind of platform you want. Good. And, and is there... Um, you said it's different between irrigation reels and pumps. Is it is it different software or it, does it work differently? Um, well, the only thing that's different is how you install the hardware oh, um, okay. and, and what kind of sensors we include in the kit. Um, but it all uses the same software platform. They're all compatible. Um, so you can have two different, completely different pumps uh, sort of working together in tandem and talking with one another. Um, and that's a big advantage. You can put all of your equipment onto the same system. That's good. And so tell me about your sales process. So what can a customer expect from order to installation and then beyond? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. So um, the way people interact with us is by either sending us an email or giving us a call. Um, we also are, are building a dealer network throughout the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, um, so people can go to their local irrigation retailer and purchase an installation kit from us directly. Right. Um, farmers typically install these themselves, um, although some dealers do choose to offer an installation service. Um, and like I said, it's a straightforward process. I mean, you can install it with a, a drill and uh, a couple of screwdrivers, basically. A lot of our installation now is fully magnetic, so our device can just you know, go chunk onto the side of a, a thick piece of iron. Um, so, uh, yeah. And then, you know, we, we have 
devices in stock year round. So if someone does call us and want to get started, even if it's, you know, middle of December, we'll get it out to them within the week and, uh, and they can install it. Wow. That's, that's fast lead time, <laughs> and especially today, right. With all of the, the shortages and supply right. chain issues. That's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we've fought with that, but, um, you know, we, we definitely want to have uh product on the shelves being a startup, like the, the customer experience for farmers is our number one priority. So that's what we're mm-hmm. focused on. Yeah, that's good. And then switching gears a little bit, ag tech is moving so fast. What, in your opinion, does the future of irrigation technology look like? Mm. Well, I mean, I think irrigation technology is, is going to continue to evolve toward more and more efficiency. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> There are automation systems that have been available for a while for things like drip irrigation and center pivot. And those are already, you know, the very most efficient forms of irrigation. So in areas where, you know, like Southern California, um, where water is a very, very scarce resource, um, folks already have access to really good automation and and really efficient technologies. Um, But the reality is that a lot of the world uh, doesn't currently use those technologies um, and can't for for various reasons. And so for for quite a while into the future, farmers will still be using, you know, the step below that, the, um, you know, the the basic electrical pumps with sprinkler systems, um, things like hard hose irrigation reels, which is one of our specialties. Um, And for those farmers, you know, being able to install a monitoring system like this is going to be a step forward. So I think you'll see more adoption of more efficient technologies across the board and and things like what we're building um, can really help with that. Um, And then, you know, at the at the very highest levels um, of efficiency, you're going to see more and more AI driven automation. So things that uh, take weather data combined with uh, soil moisture and, and plant water demand measurements and use that to not just recommend an irrigation schedule, but actually take that action um, on behalf of the grower without any need for input. Um, so I think that's that's probably the future. It's not going to happen all at once. It's going to be a phased adoption. Um, and yeah, I, th- I think that's, uh, that's yeah, the it's way. It's like it's bringing the, the full greenhouse outdoors now, which is really exciting. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Everything in a greenhouse is, you know, timed perfectly and it's making all the all the decisions but we could never do that outdoors so this is really incredible yeah well and there are you know i should say on the greenhouse topic uh, specifically um there are some folks that think large greenhouses are the future for for all crops just because they can be so so uh precisely um monitored and and controlled climate wise yeah. um and so you know that that may be a part of it but i think Growing crops outdoors is always going to be a reality, at least for my lifetime, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I would have to agree. And yeah. producers often complain, you know, I hear it all the time about tech and data overload. So how do you recommend growers move forward and then choose what's going to actually make a real impact on the farm? Yep. So I see this throughout ag tech. Um, There are a lot of startups and a lot of established companies right now that are trying to really own the data. They want to be the platform that incorporates everything all at once. And um, as a result of that, they've kind of lost sight of um, what makes a difference on on a day-to-day basis. And, And what we see from farmers is you need to actually be able to do something for them on a day to day basis. So uh, recommendations alone are not enough. Um, and, you know, I, I think that that bloat uh, in, in the number of like apps that farmers have on their phone uh, can be pretty frustrating. Um, so I think, you know, for a farmer who's trying to figure out what the most meaningful and useful things on their farm are going to be in terms of technology, I would look for ways that you can simplify your daily work um, first and foremost, over uh, you know what's going to give me high level insights or recommendations on what to do on my farm. The reality is you have to have an effective way of accomplishing the work before you start getting useful recommendations on you know what you should be doing. Yeah, absolutely good advice. <laughs> yeah. 
And I have one last question for you. Why do you personally serve the ag industry? I think we've touched on this a little bit, but what is your greatest passion in all of this? Oh, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to disconnect like my, my life growing up on the farm, um, from, from why I'm doing this. Um, I, I just think, you know, the way food is produced is obviously like critically important to, <laughs> to, to our lives and, um, the people who are, are making that happen, um, I, I really respect and, uh, admire and identify with that work. And so for me, it's really about, um, making that more efficient, not just, you know, from a, like an overall, like climate efficiency perspective, but from the actual human aspect of it, I want to make things easier for farmers. And so that's why in our core mission, which is save water, uh, protect crops and make farmers lives easier. We, we put that as one of our central tenants. Um, and so th- that for me is, is really what it's all about. Yeah, that's excellent. And mm-hmm. where can people find you? Codafarmtech.com. So C-O-D-A, farm, and then tech, C- or T-E-C-H.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a great discussion. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been awesome. And thanks to all who are watching or listening. If you want to learn more, the links are provided in the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe to North American Egg Spotlight on YouTube, Rumble, Telegram, or Egg Feast channels. And the podcast is available on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And have a great day. Thanks so much for listening to today's Egg Spotlight episode, where we put the spotlight on people and companies doing great things for the agricultural industry. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Stitcher, or on your favorite podcasting platform and give us a five-star review. You can also follow us on YouTube and Rumble to see the video version of Ag Spotlight. Also, head on over to NorthAmericanAg.com to subscribe to our Industry Connect update newsletter. If you're interested in advertising opportunities, email us at connect at NorthAmericanAg.com. Thanks for listening. Our newest podcast by North American Ag is called What Color Is Your Tractor? The stories behind the ag brands you love and the ag brands you love to hate. Hosted by me, Chrissy Wozniak. We take a deep dive into the companies that have built modern agriculture. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform. Go to whatcolorisyourtractor.com. Available on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts.